So I guess you guys um, are here to hear a creative story. Um, this is our newest uh, restaurant, Eden East. It's basically open only on Friday and Saturday evenings, sourcing everything from the farm, like like you said. Um, but my, I guess it's been a long journey to get to food. Oh, look, I'm just slides. <laughs> um, I moved to Texas in ni 1990 and basically ran away from home. I'm from Rhode Island and I kind of lived on the streets and until I got to Dallas, Texas and found a little company there called Whole Foods <laughs> Market. And they um, basically, during the early years, paid for people to get an education and they helped me to go through art school, um, mainly graphic design. So I started working for them bagging groceries and eventually grew into um, making illustrations for the company out of food um, and then grew into a, I guess, a bigger role for merchandising. And one week I, I entered this contest for uh, merchandising for the foyer. Ooh. I won and they sent me on a trip to San Francisco, which it was a time where that, that trip completely changed my life because it was a tour of all of the farms from San Francisco to uh, Santa Cruz and taking that drive and seeing those, those organic farms and meeting farmers. And then as I was leaving San Francisco, I went to the airport to use the restroom. And on the back of the toilet seat was a book and it was uh, Alice Waters Shea Panit and I was never heard of her. So at that moment I got on the plane and I read what she had been doing for California and all of the fights that she fought for fresh food. Uh, and I wanted to continue that. So I, at that moment I decided that I was going to be a chef and um, <coughs> started apprenticing probably about, well let me back up because what I started doing was uh, making food for art shows because I had a bunch of um, gallery art shows and it started to grow into a bigger picture for people who were coming to eat my food and not look at my creepy art. So <laughs> like that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so then I was like, wow, this is really fun. I love making food and I was kind of expressing the same um, thoughts on a plate rather than on uh, the canvas. And I continued to grow that by working for a number of different chefs. And then in uh, 2003, I was offered my first chef job in Fredericksburg, Texas, which <coughs> being a New England girl, I had no idea what it was going to be like to be living in the middle of Texas. <laughs> so I was there for a year and I didn't want to go back to Dallas, so that brought me to Austin. And <coughs> basically, I ran into my old friend, Mickey Spencer, who she's, I'm starting this bar on East 6th Street. And I said, um, well, I cook now, let's do something together. And then we, <coughs> taking my, all of the journeys that I had discovered with the local food scene, I, s I wanted to start a local food restaurant. And the East Side Showroom, when we opened in 2008, was about 95 to 98% all local food. And the reason the why I believe in it, and I honestly think it's our way as community members to really change the way that our community is run and where our monies are going and how we can spend our our money better by putting it directly back into our communities with the urban farms and I don't believe that <coughs> sorry my throat's a little <laughs> not us not usually up this early so uh, but um you know, I'm, I'm sure that you guys all get the reason why it's important to buy local. Um, so anyway, um, Eastside Showroom, I was there for about three years and everything that I 
put out was like a mantra, like one plate at a time, and people will get it. And they, I had a, a hard, hard time in the beginning, kind of convincing people, oh, well, this is a grass-fed steak. This tastes totally different. This is how you eat it. You don't want to cook it to medium, and people just didn't understand. It's like lamb. You have to cook it rare. It, if you try to use a knife, it's going to be tough, and you're going to have this perception of eating, you know, game meat and tough meat. So I, that's when the Homegrown Revival was the first thought in my mind was, well, we need to have a platform to educate people on how to buy and source and then cook the food for sourcing it locally. So the Homegrown Revival was founded, and since... Um, since we started, I have a now a hunter forager on staff, and he's amazing. And I have a we do videos, and so we record where our food is sourced, and then we cook it, and then we show it on the interwebs. Um, <coughs> and then Hillside Pharmacy, that's um, kind of an interesting story. So I live on the top of Rosewood uh, and Chacon. And I was working at Eastside Showroom at the time, so uh, I would drive by, do you guys know or Hillside Pharmacy? It's East 11th and uh, Navasota. And I would drive by this vacant building for the three years, and it used to be Jeans Po' Boys before, it, before that. Um, so I had this idea, Mickey and I wanted to open a delicatessen. I was like, that's our building, I know it, I feel it in my heart, I know it's, it is, and it didn't have any signs, no rent signs or anything on the windows, and we just drove by it all the time, and one day, there was, the doors were open, I was like, oh my god, I have to stop and see what's going on, and there was contractors in there, and they're building out a pub, and it was called Fork and A-Hole, <laughs> and I was like, wow, the neighborhood's really not going to like that, but... They, so I walked in and I said, who's in charge? I want to, you know, I want this, what's going on. And I just gave him my card and I said, if anything happens, just call me. And so they lost their uh, funding two weeks later. They called me. <laughs> and uh, the funny thing is, is that the, we had built, we had bought these shelving units from Elgin that were uh, uh, from 1920s pharmacy that was abandoned in the 70s. And it was like a time capsule walking in there. It's so we bought these shelves before we had the space. So we, I've, I, trying to backtrack here. Before I knew that the, the pharmacy was originally a pharmacy, we had already um, kind of knew we were going to do this old apothecary style delicatessen. So it was ironic whenever uh, I found out who the, um, owners of the building were, I had to walk to their house and knock on their door and be like, can I rent your building? <laughs> and uh, the people that own the building have owned it since the 20s and come to find out it was originally a pharmacy. So that's why it has the name pharmacy and the F for farm to, for farm to table for what I do. And a lot of people don't realize that, that it's <laughs> that kitchen there. It was supposed to just be sandwiches and sliced deli meat and now it's a full-blown restaurant and we're running everything on induction burners and my crew is just I, I can't thank them enough for all of their uh, hard work with trying to run a full menu on electric uh, ovens. It's really frustrating. Um, but I was there for about a year and you know that I guess for me and my I want to do so much stuff that's just creative. So once I ran through that menu of Hillside and kind of secured it, and then I'm like, ah, I don't really want to make sandwiches. And I said, well, Glenn and I, uh, Glenn and Paula, I don't know, they're the farmers, if you guys have been here before, Glenn and Paula, for they're kind of becoming my best friends. And I have I was the first customer with the Eastside Showroom, so I've watched this um, farm really grow. and. Uh, they they sell to restaurants all over town at this point. So I looked at them. I said, "Why don't we do something on your property, and I can pay you rent, and it would help with your farming." And uh, this has been 
we've been doing this for 30 days now and it's so much fun it's about eight course tasting menu uh, it's kind of a all night adventure on the farm which is kind of my dream come true to be honest I was, I'd never wanted to leave here when I was here so I was like why don't I just put a little restaurant on here and it's not overwhelming for me and my crew to have it op open only Friday and Saturday with another restaurant so um, yeah so I I don't know I guess I could pass around menus or so you guys could see what we're doing but the we're doing things that are don't have names or we're making up dishes and we're experimenting with all kinds of different things that you wouldn't think were edible like carrot flowers and you know rose petals and st stuff that grows wild on the farm like uh, lamb's quarters and amaranth and things like that uh, green grapes we just found last week so we made a little s green grape syrup kind of lemonade out of that and it's just a really fun a creative outlet for me uh, from all of the years I've worked to get to this point I can just really be as creative as I, as I want to and my goal for the next year is to really like uh, um, hone in my skills of plating so that's why we're doing like eight courses of plating 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 like last Saturday night John and I did 560 plates in one night and it's like okay we're gonna get this down <laughs> we're gonna do it better and better every time so I hope that um, that was interesting <laughs>